Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain how to make a variable load with Arduino and a PI controller. It includes modeling the system to a transfer function and the procedure to select the gain of each part of the controller. So, what is a load? A load is a system that draws current, like this heavy motor or a small light bulb. Then what is a variable load? It is a system that is capable of controlling the exact amount of current flowing to the load. This requires a feedback loop for controlling precisely and to cope with environmental changes that would otherwise bring the system to behave differently. The applications for variable loads include battery lifetime measurement, MPPT for solar systems, testing power supplies, and many more. The key element for implementing this variable load is the MOSFET. The IRF3205 enhanced type and channel MOSFET will be used for my implementation. This is the structure of the N channel MOSFET. As you can see, when we apply a positive charge to the gate VGS, the electrons are attracted and forms a channel, which makes it possible for the current ID to flow. And according to this IV curve, the increase in the gate voltage brings an increase to the drain current ID. And that's what we're going to do in this project. Using this characteristics of the MOSFET, we can put an Arduino with a PWM output to control the voltage of the gate. And then measure the drain current with the INA220 current sensor, which is fed back to the Arduino for comparing with the set current which is used to adjust the PWM value calculated by the PI controller. We can consider this as a closed loop system, which has a PI controller setting the PWM value, which is fed to an RC filter to generate a steady voltage to the gate pin of the MOSFET. The measured current is subtracted to the set current to produce the error value fed to the PI controller. The PI controller and PWM is implemented in the Arduino. Let's look at each block in detail. First, the RC filter is a low pass filter which filters out the high frequency component of the PWM signal, which in our case is 980 Hz. I used 15 kilo ohms and 10 microfarads to achieve a bandwidth of 1 Hz and the time constant of 0.15. The transfer function is expressed in the Laplace domain as follows. The MOSFET can be thought of as a device that transfers the voltage from the gate to the current through the drain. The transfer function is simply a gain. But how much? We can deduce this value by using the relationship between the gate voltage and drain current from the datasheet of IRF3205. When the current is below 10 amperes, we can approximate the relationship to be linear as this blue line shows. The slope of this line is the gain of the MOSFET, which is 9000 subtracted by 1000 and divided by 0.5 volts. If we switch the representation of the voltage to PWM value, we can acquire a gain value of 313.7. PI controller gets the error value, which is the difference between set current and the measured current. This error is multiplied by the proportional gain and the integrator gain. And in the integrator part, the result is accumulated or integrated for the steady state error approach to zero. The result is summed up and passed on to the PWM block. This plot is the step response of these two parts. You can see that the proportional output in blue kicks up at the beginning when the error is large, but it might not reach the final value of one, just as in this example. That's when the integrator part jumps in. As long as an error exists, the integrator part will continue its control. The transfer function of this PI controller is as shown below. This is the block diagram of our system represented by the transfer function of each block. If we multiply each transfer functions, we get the overall open loop transfer function of the system, which is shown here. However, this is expressed as the continuous time function, and the discrete time counterpart is this, with Ts the sampling time of the system. 
Sampling time is the operation period for this system. In other words, this loop operates every 0.1 seconds. Now it's time for demo. Through this demo, I will show you how to tune the parameters for our PI controller using the root locus and step response of the system. This is the MATLAB code I made to analyze the root locus and the step response of the transfer function for the variable load. Here, I defined the parameters for loop analysis. TS is the sampling time of our system, which means the Arduino will execute the loop every 0.1 seconds. KC is the gain of the MOSFET in terms of PWM value of the gate voltage to drain current. It means that when we increase the PWM value by 1, the drain current will be increased by 313 milliamperes. Then we define the integrator gain and the proportional gain. The next section is the continuous time representation of the variable load transfer function. We draw the root locus and the step response of this system. The last section is the discrete time counterpart. To select the appropriate gain value, we set a certain gain to 1 and the other gain to 0, and then use the root locus plot to pick the right value for that gain. First, let's set the integrator gain to 1 and the proportional gain to 0. Execute the program and let's take a look at the root locus plot. There are two poles located at 1 and 0 0.333, which are the poles of the open loop transfer function. As we increase the gain from 0, the pole of the closed loop transfer function moves towards the origin to 0 0.667 and then moves upwards to infinity. You can see that as soon as we move above the real axis, the damping decreases, and this results the system to have overshoot. The stability boundary is here, when the line meets the unit circle. The gain is around 0 0.0315. If we increase the gain further, then the system will be unstable. So, what is the appropriate gain for this system? I want the response to show minimum overshoot. So the pole needs to lie on the real axis, and that's the first condition. And for fast response, we need to stay further away from the pole as possible, which is 0 0.667, where the two poles coincide with each other. We can see that the gain value at this point is 0 0.00531. So if we set the integrator gain to this value, it will show the fastest response time with minimum overshoot. Let's try this value. Here's the step response. It is a nice monotonic increasing curve, which has a rise time of approximately 1.5 seconds. Let's upload this value to the Arduino and see the actual response. This is a board with the closed loop system we have seen before. Let's check the step response by setting the current value to 900 milliamperes. Connect to the board and set the input value to 900 milliamperes. You can see the measured current increasing and slightly overshoots above 1000 milliamperes. Set the value back to zero. And then using the Python code, let's plot the result. Here, you can see the nice step response, but has slight overshoot. This overshoot is due to the phenomena called integrator winding. The integrator output decreases after the error is minus that is, after the measured current exceeds the set current. So the overshoot is unavoidable when we use only the integrator for our controller. In order to reduce the overshoot, we need to bring in the proportional part to our system. As we did earlier, set the proportional gain to 1 and the integrator gain to 0. This root locus is showing two poles as before, but one zero is near the unit circle. The stability boundary this time is the point where the green line meets the unit circle. The gain at this point is 0 0.006, so we know that the proportional gain should not exceed this value for the system to be stable. Let's try this value and take a look at the step response. Here, we can see that the step response settles to some value, but the oscillation is present in the beginning of the step response which is not desirable for our system. This means that the proportional gain should be reduced. 
Let's try 0 0.003. The oscillation has reduced, but still present. Let's try 0 0.002. Still, we have some oscillation. Let's decrease this value further down to 0 0.001. Now the oscillation is gone. With this value for the proportional gain and the integrator gain of 0 0.00531, let's see the overall step response. The rise time increased to 2 seconds. Let's take these values to our Arduino board and see the response. Change the value and upload. Connect the serial monitor and apply 900 milliampere step. And then after a short period of time, set the current to zero. Let's see the step response of our system. You can see here, the overshoot has decreased. So our PI controller for the variable load system will have a final gain value of 0 0.00531 for the integrator and the 0 0.001 for the proportional part. Feel free to play around with these gains and see how the system response changes from the changes you make. This is it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.